This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Wherever you happen to be today in Southern California, we appreciate you spending a little time with us. I'm Rod Stutzen. Logan, good to be back on the radio with you. Yeah, great to be back for another week. And uh, as always, I'm, I'm looking forward to a good show. Yeah, we've got a lot of good things to talk about today, all having to do with getting folks to and through retirement. And the most important information I can dispense is your phone number, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN, your number to call for Regary Financial. All you have to do today is call, leave them a message with your name and phone number. You'll get a call back first part of the week, and then you can arrange a time to have your conversation with Logan Sadler. It's called a discovery meeting. It's not going to cost you anything. It's not going to carry with it any kind of obligation. 888-823-PLAN. Don't worry, I'll repeat that number again uh, during the show several times. Hey, just wonder if you saw this uh, interesting story about this man in Malaysia who stole a $280,000 car by driving it through the window of a dealership showroom. First of all, it's amazing. Car costs two hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars. That's like driving a house out the showroom. <laughs> exactly. He was. Uh, I guess he was inside looking at it in the showroom, and and then drove it right through the window, and he quickly abandoned it because the gas tank was empty. <laughs> but then he went to buy a gas can, and then went to the police station where the car was impounded. And stole it again. <laughs> so, this guy was determined. Yeah, yeah, he's he's determined to get that car. <laughs> That's amazing, man. I mean, first of all, I, I don't know if even if I had the money, I don't think I would buy a two hundred eighty thousand dollar car. But now, what's funny is some of our most wealthiest clients that we have, yeah. a lot of them drive like a you know a five year old Toyota, right? Or you yeah. know, <laughs> and old some of them Volvo, have the you know exactly exactly. Some of them have the nice cars and all that, but uh, like you said, a lot of people it's not their thing, and you know, cars now. Days are already like you know fifty, sixty grand for a, for just a somewhat you know newer car that's nice. So yeah, I couldn't imagine dropping two hundred eighty grand on a car. Uh, but yeah, like you said, that guy really wanted that car. I also can't imagine can't imagine driving it through the showroom window and then and then go going to steal it again to the police station, which is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. It might have only been worth 180 after he got out of there with all the damage. <laughs> if he ever got out of jail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I know a lot of folks out there, and I know you play a lot of golf, and a lot of people out there uh, play golf. And so mm-hmm. let's talk about golf a little bit and what we might be able to learn about retirement planning. And uh, I guess everybody can figure out the, the correlation here. If you have a hole in one on the golf course, uh, what's that like when it comes to retirement planning? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, you know, hole in one is obviously always the goal for a lot of golfers, right? I mean, that's obviously even when we're do, you're doing mini golf or stuff like that, it's it's just really exciting to hit that hole in one, and uh, it's even more exciting when it actually happens out there on the golf course, which is for those of you that actually play golf, know how rare it is. Yeah. Um, you know, it's <laughs> once in a lifetime type thing, right? But by hitting a hole in one, it usually it's funny to believe, but it actually has very little impact on your overall success. When you look at the history of, like, let's say the Masters, there have been 24 hole in ones made during every year during those tournaments. And it's funny because of the 24 hole in ones made by 24 different golfers, it is amazing because most of those hole in one golfers that hit those hole in ones didn't end up winning the Masters, right? It's amazing because just because that one shot worked out, right, <laughs> helped your score a little bit for that time being or boosted you up, but it didn't really help you long term. And uh, a lot of the times, it's because we hit a hole in one, then we, you know, sh- you know, post a ten on the next hole, right? Because we're too excited to get too cocky. <laughs> and uh, and same when it comes to investing. I think the hole in one, when you look at investing and retirement planning, is trying to get lucky and hit that one home run. You know, hit that one hole in one. And obviously, that's always a nice thing to do, right? To have a real good stock that takes off or buy a really cool real estate investment that ends up doing really well. Um, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot if you have, you know. If 
if you have 100 investments and only one of them does well, it probably doesn't even out over your lifetime, right? So I always like to tell people when we're looking at retirement planning, a lot of the people that we're dealing with, they're 55 years old, 60 years old, 65 years old, you know, so a lot of us aren't trying to hit home runs. We're not trying to hit those hole in ones. What we're trying to do is play a good, consistent round of golf, right? And post that consistent score, right? We're looking for singles and doubles, so to speak. And a lot of the times that actually does better over a longer period of time. And I know it's hard to believe because, yeah, you would think having the hole in one, you would think that set you up for a good score. But just like in financial planning, just because you have one or two good investments that take off, uh, you know, I always joke when you're on the golf course with your friends, I don't know if you ever came into this uh, situation, Ron, but a lot of your friends like to tell you about that one really good investment they made, right? Of course. Oh, man, you know, I put money in XYZ and I made a ton of money. But they never tell you about the ones they lost, right? They, they never bring that up. You know, <laughs> they only talk about the good ones. So it's so important when you're looking at retirement planning to not get too caught up in trying to hit that hole in one and really make sure that you're looking at the long term approach, staying in your comfortability as far as risk goes and understanding the goals and objections of, of your retirement plan. And the obvious baseball analogy when you talk about all this is, you know, if you have a home run hitter on your team, he's going to strike out a lot. You know, so. yeah, that's true. I mean, you look at like you know, like they always say in baseball, we get a lot of credit to those home run hitters, right? But a lot of them don't even get on base nearly as much as some of these other hitters. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice to hit home runs, nice to you know, nice to hit the long ball, but it's also nice to get on base, be consistent, and uh, and you know, overall have a better impact on the game. Another thing I was thinking about is when you play golf, you know, you need lots of different clubs in your bag. You can't just have. Uh, you know, a putter and a and a driver and and get by with that. You need lots of different clubs. Uh, how do you relate that to retirement planning? Yeah, you know that that's a very great analogy, and I think it translates very well because it's true. When you know in, in golf, you want a lot of different clubs, and each of them kind of serve their purpose, right? I mean, you don't want to take a well, some people do it on YouTube and things nowadays, but you don't want to take your putter and drive with it, right? You don't want to you don't want to have to putt with your chipper and all that stuff, right? Like each each club really does serve a purpose in the bag, and I feel that it translates extremely well into investing. Each investment out there should serve its own purpose. If you go into retirement and you have you know stocks and bonds, that means you only got a putter and a driver, right? There's a whole lot of clubs in between there that you're going to need mm-hmm. to to make a successful retirement. And I feel that's a lot of what we do is. Uh, a lot of people out there will try to do things themselves and stuff like that. And there's a lot of investments out there where you need somebody. And so when you're looking at your golf bag, you want to make sure that you're using more than just your 401k or more than just a stock or more than just some mutual funds. You want to make sure you have some fixed annuities. You want to make sure you have some pensions. You want to make sure you have social security. You want to make sure you have a diversified market portfolio. You might want some real estate. You want, might want some dividend paying stocks, right? So you want to make sure you're looking at this from a, from a holistic point. Point of view and making sure that you have the investments you need in your bag to get you through retirement. Because again, you're going to need a lot of different, uh, a lot of different investments to do different things over this 20 or 30 year retirement, uh, more probably than what got you to retirement, right? Sometimes what got you to retirement doesn't get you through retirement. So you want to make sure you got that full bag of clubs. Yeah. And we mentioned diversification so many times on this show, and that's what diversification is all about, having a lot of clubs in your bag. (laughs) And each one has a special purpose, really. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, uh, another thing that, you know, good golfers will tell you that, you know, professional golfers, if you find these guys who are successful, they more than likely have a really good caddy, uh, a person who's experienced, who's been around a lot, who knows a lay of the land, so to speak, knows the mm-hmm. course really well and can offer advice off the cuff. And uh, listening to your caddy is really important. And I would say that's the same thing that goes for your financial planning. You need to listen to your financial advisor. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I mean, the financial advisor is really, really what we should be doing for our clients is being that sound peace of mind where we're able to really kind of weed through a lot of the noise, provide good, solid advice, and really kind of guide guide our clients through these phases, right? Because I mean, there's a lot of uh, challenging things that come up with retirement planning. It might be volatile markets. It might be high inflation. It might be losing a spouse. It might be, you know, helping the kids once both of you pass away. I mean, there's a lot of different things that an advisor 
really should be doing throughout your your life. But like you said, I mean, it is kind of like a caddy in golf. I always joke, you can have a professional caddy, right? Yeah. Where uh, they're pretty smart. That's all they do is help people and help guide them in, in the right direction when it comes to their golf and, and their game. Um, and then there's that friend when you go golfing who thinks he's a caddy, right? Who, who Who's not really an expert, has done some golf here and there, and they love to give you those tips and pointers, but really can't do it themselves anyway, right? They're not really a good golfer. And I relate that to retirement planning as well. I have a lot of a lot of clients that will come in and, well, my friend said to do X, Y, Z. Well, your friend might be in a totally different situation, right? <laughs> your friend might not have any financial needs. Your friend might be a millionaire or he might be broke, right? And it's funny because uh, a lot of us tend to listen to those friends. So I think it's really important when you're out there looking for a financial advisor, and some of you guys may have one, and uh, it might be a nice guy or girl and you get along real well, but you want to make sure that you have a financial advisor that is really specializes in where you're at and what you're trying to do and making sure that they're able to provide you, again, with that bag of tools that you're going to need, that, that bag of clubs to make sure that you have all the tools you're going to need in your retirement plan to make it successful, to make it last, and also to make it fit what it is you're trying to do. And again, all of us envision retirement differently. So it's very important that you get that customized retirement plan that is fit for you. And again, make sure you're working with a professional that is qualified. And that's what they help people do is plan and prepare for retirement. So if you're interested in a good caddy or a good financial advisor, uh, give us a call. I'd love to sit down in that discovery meeting and, and see if we can't be a good fit to work together and kind of introduce you to our firm as well as to uh, for us to for you to introduce you to us so it'd be a great opportunity for us to sit down whether that's via zoom or in one of our offices i'd love to spit, sit down and uh, spend an hour with you and go take a deep dive into your retirement plan or well, logan i'm going to be your caddy today all right by giving, giving everybody your phone number <laughs> 888-823-PLAN that is 888-823-7526 but 888-823 plan is the easy way to remember it because plan is such an important part of what you need to be doing during this phase of your life. Logan Sadler works with all three generations of some of the client families at Regary. Many of those clients have been with the, this firm for uh, well over a quarter of a century. And at Regary Financial, they take a look at everything. And when you call this number, you're going to be able to get a conversation with Logan Sadler, uh, the same guy you hear on the radio show. One more time, the number is 888 Two, three, plan. We'll be back with more in just a moment. You're listening to The Financial Beat. This is The Financial Beat. Welcome back to The Financial Beat starring Logan Sadler, your financial maestro. Glad to be on the radio with Logan today. My name is Rod Stutz and Logan Sadler not only has this radio show every week, but also has uh, podcasts that are available for you, a YouTube channel with all kinds of helpful videos. And Logan, for the folks who have not, um, how do folks access those? Yeah, for those of you that haven't yet, you can head over to YouTube and type in The Financial Beat, just like the name of this show. And uh, there's over 20-some videos now up there uploaded for you guys. And for those of you that like the radio show but are looking for more content that is maybe more specific to your situation and able to kind of take a deeper dive visually, the YouTube is a great opportunity for that. So head over to The Financial Beat. Again, there's a bunch of videos on what to do with your old 401k, understanding how Social Security works, where should you put your money during high inflationary times, all those good content and, uh, and uploaded videos are over there for you. So head over to The Financial Beat on YouTube, as well as if you wanted to catch this radio show, we have over 74 now, Ron, wow. uploaded on podcast, I know. So wherever you download podcasts, that might be Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever it is, you can go over there, type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler and uh, listen to any any 74 of those whenever, whenever it's convenient for you. That's a lot of Logan Sadler. He must be a pretty smart guy. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot of Logan. That's for sure, but also a lot of Ron. <laughs> 888-823-PLAN. One more time, that's your number. And uh, listen, if you're in uh, Rancho Cucamonga, uh, Loma Linda, Corona, wherever you happen to be today, thank you so much for listening to The Financial Beat. Uh, Logan, do you have a cat at your house? You know what? I don't have a cat. Um, yeah. No, you, I don't. Are you a dog person? <laughs> you caught me. Yeah, I'm more of a, I tend to be more of a dog person. I've never, it's funny, never had a cat ever. Well, I, we have a couple of cats at my house. And, okay. And, you know, but I've been a dog person my whole life as well. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I just found this interesting story here that uh, back in the 1960s, the CIA tried using cats as spies in the 1960s. <laughs> after five years and after spending over $20 million training these wow. spy cats, 
they gave up and they determined the program to be unsuccessful. And Ooh. I think I could have told them that because, yeah, <laughs> you know, no kidding. Uh, dogs are, are very, you know, they will do what you tell them to do and, and that sort of thing. And I, I like the old saying that women and cats will do what they want and men and dogs will learn to get along with it or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Cats are really like, it's funny. I, even people that are really big cat people that train their cats and stuff pretty well. Yeah. Like you said, cats kind of do their own thing. I mean, they're their own, they're their own person. That's for sure. Which, which is one of the cool things about cats. Yeah. Um, but like you said, $20 million is quite a big investment to make before you realize it wasn't working out. <laughs> and in today's dollars, I mean, that's probably what a hundred million or something. <laughs> oh yeah. When you adjust that, absolutely pretty close to that. So that's <laughs> quite a hefty penny. And, uh, but that is funny because cats, cats always kind of like, you know, they're so mysterious, right? That's what yeah. I think everyone loves about them. Yeah, cats do what they want, that's for sure. They do. Uh, at least the two in my house do. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about busting some myths. Um, okay. You know, there, there are lots of financial untruths out there, some legendary stories and some things that people assume to be true, but they are not necessarily true. I'll state the financial myth here, and you explain to all of us why it's a myth, okay? Yeah. Um, number one, shifting from stocks to bonds removes the volatility from your portfolio. Why is that a myth? Yeah, that's that's something that a lot of you listen to this radio show have heard before, probably are doing right now because that's what you've heard, right? Um, you know, that's a very big, I'd say that's a huge myth that's out there where when you're in bonds, there's no volatility and uh, or, or, or it significantly gets rid of the volatility, which just, just isn't true. Let me, let me throw out some numbers here for you. And depending on when you're listening to this, it might be a little bit different, but just totally the year to date, the Vanguard Total Bond Index Fund, which is one of the bigger, uh, one of the biggest funds out there now that holds bonds. And again, it's a total bond index fund. So it's got short term, long term, corporate, every type of bond in there. So it's a really good indicator. You know, year to date, that was down at its low of around 13%. Right, so uh, that compared to the S and P 500, which is the top 500 stocks in the United States, essentially uh, was down 23%. Mm -hmm. So if you went to bonds thinking that that was the safest place to go, you still were down at one point almost 13%. Right, so that myth of that when you go to bonds that that's safe money is not necessarily the truth, right? So when I use bonds or I'm explaining bonds to clients, it is a good diverse diversifier. It is a way to somewhat offload some risk. But there definitely, definitely is still volatility and risk involved when we're looking at bonds. So it's really important for those of you out there where we're getting ready to retire. And a lot of us, you know, accounts have really grown over these last few years. So you might have a million dollars or two million dollars or 200,000 or whatever the amount is. And if we're putting half our money or 60% of our money or 40% of our money in bonds, thinking that's the safe place to go, um, you know, when you're down 13% year to date at a low, that doesn't necessarily feel like safe money, right? <laughs> it, it still feels like something that's going down. So it's very important, I think, when you're looking at a retirement plan to make sure that you understand that you do want some safe money and you do want some of your money to kind of limit volatility if possible. That's why there's things out there like fixed index annuities, fixed annuities, CDs, cash, you know, uh, real estate is a good alternative as well as some structured notes and things. So you really want to make sure you're understanding where the volatility of each of your investments are before just assuming that, hey, you know, I've heard bonds are safe. So really, you know, if those of you out there that have a lot in bonds right now, I definitely recommend you give us a call and let's sit down. I'd love to kind of show you some good alternatives to kind of supplement some of those bond holdings that might have some better performance as well as might be a better uh, risk off alternative. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, and that is no myth, but we are exploding some myths here today. And uh, here's another one for you, perhaps. Once you're retired, life insurance is no longer necessary. Is that necessarily <laughs> true? No, it's not necessarily true, right? You know, I mean, let's let's be honest, right? What the, what the simplest form of life insurance is, is what we all think of is, well, if I'm young, right, I'm 30 or 40 years old, I'm working, I got kids at home, I got a mortgage, I probably should have life insurance, right? That, that's probably, would you would you agree, Ron, that's probably the most common form you hear of? Yeah, I think the first first thing, thing that, that people think about is, is that kind of scenario. Yeah, right. Which is which is a is is a great rule of thumb, which I do agree with. Where yeah, you're thirty or you're twenty or thirty or forty years old, you do need some good life insurance to help pay out the house, supplement the kids, and things like that. If something were to happen to the breadwinner or the spouse, it is a really important attribute to uh, making sure your family is protected. Which we're huge believers of that. Well, it almost is the same thing when we're looking at retirement planning. Um, I've never heard any client say. 
when they pass away, man, my husband or my wife had way too life insurance, right? That's not that's not how it works. Typically, it's still a huge relief um, because I think a lot of us forget. Let's look at a pension. Um, some of us out there that, you know, I work with a lot of uh, nurses and, and things of that sort, like at Kaiser and stuff like that. A lot of them get pensions or have lump sum options or take a payout, a lot of these different things. And it's funny because a lot of us forget that some of our pensions out there, we might have only took a 75% survivor. What that means is something happens to me, my spouse only gets 75%. Mm-hmm. Some of them might even be 50%. Right. Some of them might even be they get nothing, right? Depending on what you take. Yeah. So uh, we use life insurance a lot for income replacement. So if something happens to somebody and you got a $500,000 policy, let's say uh, let's say Joe and Sue are married, right? Something happens to Joe, uh, Sue would now get 500 grand tax-free to now help make up that income that she just lost, right? Yeah. And that could be a pension. The other one is Social Security. As we talk about all the time, if Joe and Sue, if one's getting 2000 a month and one's getting 3000 a month, if Joe passes away, Sue would get whatever one was higher and lose the other one. So mm-hmm. in that case, she would have lost $2,000 a month. So it's, you know, we use it a lot for income replacement. It's something where, again, you never could really have enough life insurance, I would say, but it's very important to not let those policies lapse or go out without really looking at your plan and seeing where some holes are in the income for replacement, um, as well as legacy. I have a lot of clients where, and, and you probably heard me talk about this a lot, but it's pretty funny because sometimes the husband wants to leave money to the kids and the wife doesn't, mm-hmm. right? Or sometimes it's the wife or the husband, vice versa. But it's funny because what a really good solve, a problem solve for that is life insurance. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we could say, hey, listen, you know, uh, Joe and Sue have a million dollars and uh, they have a good retirement hunk and they really want to enjoy retirement, but one of them really wants to leave a legacy to the kids. Well, there's not really a better asset to leave behind than life insurance because it is 100% tax-free upon death. So the best way to do that is let's keep the life insurance in play or get a life insurance in play. And now we're able to use our money and enjoy it in our retirement. And when we pass away, there's still a huge death benefit that goes to the kids, right? So it's a really great way to leverage some money and really use it for multiple purposes, a lot more than just for the younger family trying to help their wife and kids through a hard time. It could really be used for so many other opportunities out there that really are um, really are an important attribute to retirement planning that sometimes gets missed. Now, if you're listening to the show today and somebody tells you life insurance isn't necessary because you're retired, that is not necessarily true. Right? Not you necessarily just true. Just listen to all those things that Logan just pointed out. Uh, this next myth here, I think, is pretty commonly uh, accepted by a lot of people. Uh, a long time ago, years ago, before I started doing these shows, I used to hear mm-hmm. people say, uh, you know, you're going to be in a lower tax bracket once you retire. And mm-hmm. that's, man, that uh, can can actually be the opposite of that. It's crazy. Yeah, isn't it amazing? I mean, and and it it is it is something we're seeing more and more now where yeah, clients are just they've done really well and saved really well and and let's be honest, we want to enjoy retirement, right? A lot of us want to travel, go see our kids, our grandkids and uh volunteer and do all these fun things, go golf, go do, you know, hiking activities, all that stuff, but you know, let's be honest, a lot of the times that costs money and so our income tends to be very high and a lot of the times we don't have a choice when we get to RMD age, which is required minimum distributions on our 401k's and and IRAs and all that stuff, we have to start taking money out. So a lot of us lose a lot of tax control if not done properly, where towards the end, we're, we're looking at, we might be in a higher tax bracket than we were when we were working. And then all of a sudden we say, well, wait a minute, this isn't what I heard. This isn't what's supposed to happen, right? <laughs> um, so it's very important. Like I have a client I'm working with right now where it's funny, he, he worked his whole life, made, he made about $80,000 per year, and uh, he's getting ready to go out and retire next year. His income, when you look at Social Securities and, and some, some annuity payments and, and some market withdrawals and dividends and things of that sort, he's going to be at about $120,000 per year. Wow. Retired, right? <laughs> so it, it's amazing where you look at that. His income significantly is going up in retirement. And a lot of the times, here's the biggest fear, Ron, and I know we've talked about this before, you know, a lot of people, which I tend to be one of them, and I think you are as well, where we're, we're thinking... Let's be honest, tax rates might go up. Yeah. You know, when you look around with all the lending we've done over the last few years and the way that a lot of the, uh, the, the political landscape seems to be going, it does look like 
taxes are, aren't going to get more favorable than they are right now. So our $100,000 a year income right now, if we have that $100,000 a year income in retirement in a couple of years, it might be at a much higher tax bracket. Yep. So I think tax planning is something that's more important now than ever. And, and it's something that we don't have a lot of time to do things on that. So if you're one of those clients that's getting kind of close to retirement or maybe just retired and you're looking at uh, you know your retirement accounts and things of that sort, and you're looking to get a tax plan together, there's probably never been a better time than to make that phone call and let's get started on that because time is of the essence and the more time you have the more opportunity and flexibility we might have i think one of it's very safe for me to say that uh, taxes are not going to go down in the future <laughs> I, yeah i don't i don't i wouldn't think so right i don't hear many politicians running on that on that slogan you know <laughs> exactly hey one more i just wanted to mention here we're talking about busting myths on today's show financial planning today is much easier to do without professional help because of all the technology that's available. And boy, uh, with the current economic climate, nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah, I, I, I highly disagree with that. You know, And I, I do have a lot of planning softwares we use. We pay a bunch of money for them, and they are great. They do help the clients get a good picture. It is fun to play with and gives you guys a really good understanding of what we're looking at. But it's so important that you don't only rely on software, right? I always say software is great and it's great to use, but a lot of the times you can kind of make it sing your own tune, right? So if you want it to look good, you can make it look good. So yep. it's really important, uh, especially those of you that aren't in this industry or don't understand a lot about it. I think it's so, so important that you find a really good advisor that you could work with. And again, I hope that's us. Hopefully you make that call. But if you have an advisor or working with someone, you know, it's all about finding that right fit. And I feel like once you find the right fit and, and really looking at a fiduciary that's actually out there looking at your best interest can offer things like insurance, right? Long-term care, uh, when you're looking at annuities, life insurance, as well as can offer the stock market and the other side of the world where to making sure that you're getting a full comprehensive plan, not just a one-sided approach. I think that's a much better way to go than relying on just a computer program to make sure that Listen, it's your life savings, and you want to make sure it's situated properly to last the rest of your and your family's lifetime. So again, you know, I think it's really important that you find that financial advisor that, yeah, probably has those financial planning softwares, but also is able to rely on their experience and the clients that they have helped over some of us, you know, generations. So it's very important. So any of you guys out there that have kind of fell into one of these myths or don't don't believe me on one of these, uh, make us make that call and come in. Let's sit down and go over uh, what it is that we're looking at when it comes to retirement planning and making sure that we're not falling into some of these myths to, to maybe uh, make us stumble through retirement. So go ahead and make that call. I'd love to spend an hour with you. And again, take a deep dive. And, and how it works is you call the number Ron's going to give you here in a second. Somebody from my office will reach out to you first thing Monday morning. And then guess what? We get that discovery meeting with myself at one of our offices, and we'll take a deep dive into your retirement plan. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. Maybe be the most important phone call you ever made. A lot of people, when they get together with Logan for the first time, say, gosh, I don't know why I waited so long to do this. Why procrastinate? Go ahead and do it today. 888-823-PLAN. Now, you won't necessarily speak with anybody today. All you got to do is leave your name and number. You'll get a call back first part of the week, and then you can have your conversation with Logan Sadler. Could be on the phone, could be via Zoom, could be one of the convenient offices, either Hemet or Redlands. Uh, it's all up to you. Uh, what's convenient for you? 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler. You're listening to The Financial Beat, and we are here with more important information coming up in just a moment, so stay with us. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show, because we have some important information coming up. 
Welcome back to more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Uh, Logan is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer. And not only has this radio show, but has podcasts that you can listen to. If you miss the show, you can listen at 3 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter. And uh, also, he has uh, various videos on his own YouTube channel. Go to financialbeatradio.com. You want to get hold of those podcasts, financialbeatradio.com. And go to YouTube and search for Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, and you'll find all those YouTube videos. The number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. And remember that uh, at Regary Financial, they have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and Medicare specialists. So it's really a one-stop shop for all things financial. They can help you offer uh, well-rounded guidance in all things. Uh, financial for their clients. Get the discovery meeting at no cost, no obligation by calling 888-823-PLAN. Hey, let's talk about various financial diseases. A lot of people may think they're really healthy and, and maybe they are healthy physically, but they have various financial diseases. And by that, uh, I'll just say the doctor is in. Dr. Sadler, are you ready to answer some questions here? <laughs> I am ready. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to give you a financial disease and describe it, and you help us find the way to a cure. All right? I'm I'm looking forward to it. First of all, acute portfolio riscopathy. Patients afflicted with this particular disease often see significant volatility in their portfolio, which can lead to other health issues like upset stomach or inability (laughs) to sleep. What are the causes of acute portfolio riscopathy? Well, that is uh, that is somebody that I have definitely definitely had that come into our come into our office here before. Right? Um, so that's somebody, Ron. Like I think, what what really is the cause of that is not not understanding your risk. You know, when you look at, I always tell clients if you're looking at the news and you're getting a stomach ache, if you're watching the ticker tape every morning, it means you're probably not real comfortable in your investments long term, right? I mean, you might be maybe too heavily weighted in stocks, might be too much in one stock, um, or might just have too much in the market in general and not. Have have the proper diversification and things that might be safe money or good alternatives. So I think it causes a lot more um, unsettled sleep nights, right? The bad stomach aches, all that stuff. I've heard it all before where, you know, a lot of the times you're just being too aggressive for what it is you're trying to do. And I think the best fix for that and the best uh, cure and the best medicine for that is to make sure you understand what investments you're in, what is the risk in each of those investments, as well as what is the long-term outcome of those investments historically. And I feel that's very important to understand because I have a lot of clients where they'll come in and they're like, you know, hey, I watch the market every day. I'm worried I'm retiring next year. If it keeps going down, I don't know when I'll be able to retire or, you know, I need to make this amount of return to be able to retire in two years. If you're, if you're playing it that close to the wire and are that, that too heavily, uh, you know, affected by up or down markets, it means you're probably, again, not situated correctly. And I think it's very, very important with investors. A lot of people always ask me, where should you put your money? Where should you put your money? It really depends on what your risk is. I have some clients that the market go down 50% and guess what? They they don't care. They know it will come back or they think it'll come back and they're, they feel that they're fine. I have some clients, the market goes down 10% and they think the world's over, right? So yeah. it's very important to find that right balance for you because there's so much out there other than just the stock market. You want, yes, it's a great place to have money. You might want a lot of your money there. You want, might want very little there, depending on what your risk is. And it's very important that you understand that to, again, help eliminate uh, a lot of that heartburn and <laughs> sleepless nights. Because again, that's no way to get through uh, day by day. And that's definitely not a way to transition into retirement or to live in retirement. So there you go. You may be suffering from acute portfolio riscopathy. And uh, got another disease to point out here for you. Okay. Uh, how about old fogies disease? Uh, the causes of this disease are a long lifespan combined with poor planning, which can cause its victim to start running out of money toward the end mm-hmm. of life. Is yeah. there a cure? Yeah, there is a cure. You know, and that's something where we do see this a lot too. Where some clients they don't really think about longevity. I have a client the other day. He's like, "Listen, you know, mom passed away at seventy-five. Dad passed away at seventy-two. You know, I'm sixty-five. I probably got a couple more good years, right? Well." maybe, but maybe not, right? You might have 20 more good years, you know? So uh, it's so important when you're doing a retirement plan, 
one of the first things, yes, uh, market returns, risk, all of that stuff, again, is very important. The next thing is longevity. That is a risk that a lot of people don't talk about. And it's something that really could be crucial because if you run out of money, there ain't no going back to work in those 80s or 90s to go get it, right? And a lot of the times, a lot of people forget that sometimes things get more expensive the longer we're alive and the longer we need more and more help and all that stuff comes along. So I think it's so important when we're looking at longevity, there's a lot of things out there we can do to help uh, mitigate that. There's things like uh, you know, life, lifetime income annuities are one of the things we use a lot with clients. If we have the proper assets and our, it fits our risk and our objectives, there's tools out there we could use, Ron. I know you've heard me talk about it, but yeah. essentially you could put, you know, X amount of money in there and it pays you a lifetime income, meaning it never can run out of money. Even if it runs out of money, it continues to pay you that income. So I think those are a great tool that we use. And there's even some out there now, Ron, where they can, they increase. Mm -hmm. So every so many years, your, your payment could increase to help keep up with inflation, which I know for a lot of the baby boomers and, and people we're working with, that is a huge concern as well. Inflation has been crazy. Uh, you know, I would like some income, but I'd also like it to possibly go up in the future. So I think it's very important we don't ignore those tools when it comes to income planning and looking at income planning at being possibly, you know, a 20 to 30 year plan, not a five or a 10 year, because again, Things get out of things get stressful towards the end, and you don't want to be one of those clients that is running out of money late in retirement. Because again, uh, you know, when the income stops, there's, it's really hard to go back and and make that income up at that age. So it's very important you're looking at the long term and the longevity being a very big risk up there with taxes and market risk and all the other ones. A longevity is a huge one. Here's another one: uh, nursing homatosis. <laughs> Patients <laughs> suffering from nursing homatosis may experience the rapid deterioration of their wealth due to exorbitant nursing home or assisted living expenses. How can we all prevent this disease? Yeah, that's that's another one. I had a client I was talking with yesterday, Ron. Uh, he was they're younger. They're in their they're in their early forties, and um, it was funny because they are their parents were clients of ours, and we were we were just talking about financial planning and you know how to put away money, where to put money, all that stuff that comes up in our conversations. And uh, he asked a question about long term care and how that works, and I asked you know what what made him think about that this young, and then he said you know what my grandma. Uh, it was doing okay and everything was okay. And all of a sudden uh, she had to go into a home. And he was like, my, my parents were telling me, you know, it went from around five or 6,000 a month to help, to help grandma. All of a sudden now it's up to $12,000 a month oh. because her situation took a turn for the worst, had to go into a full-time home. And uh, of course her income, you know, wasn't nearly enough to cover the 12,000 a month. So she was having to significantly pull from savings and investment accounts and the situation, I guess, from what he was telling me, didn't look great that she probably could run out of money pretty quick. And so he was asking about that. And it was funny because that's something that only comes up when we see a family member go through it or when we see a family friend or someone go through it. We don't really think about that because let's be honest, we all kind of think we're invincible to some extent, right? <laughs> um, but the odds are, you know, we're not. And so the, like we've talked about, the statistics are very, very high that we're going to spend some time in a nursing home. Um, one of us, but if you're married, the chances are pretty good that one of you will for sure. And so it's really important to help mitigate that risk and making sure that in your retirement plan that you've covered long-term care. Yes, that could mean buying a policy. A lot of the policies uh, I've talked about before on the show where some of them are really, really good nowadays. The old ones were kind of a use it or lose it tool. You put money in there. If you never used it, it was like car insurance, right? It was gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, now a lot of them are kind of like a life insurance benefit or like an annuity in some cases where you could put money in there. If you don't use it, there's a benefit that gets paid out to the kids or your whoever you want it to go to, your beneficiaries. So there's that way. There's also ways to make sure we're sa saving some money uh, set aside for long-term care. But a lot of people don't understand that, you know, it doesn't mean we got to have 20,000 saved for long-term care, right? It might be, we might need a hundred or 200,000 or 300,000 to cover some of our care benefits, depending on how long. So it's something where uh, the nursing home and long-term care planning is something where it is a very, very important topic to plan for because it's something that, again, the odds are it, it probably will happen to us. So we want to make sure that we're situating ourselves really 
the best we can to insulate ourselves from that because that's another one where we might have thought we had enough money to retire, but we didn't calculate for spending two or three or four hundred thousand dollars in long term care in our eighties or nineties. You know, we always say that Uncle Sam is standing there with his hand out, you know. <laughs> some people some people suffer from Uncle Sam syndrome, one of the most reviled diseases in our society today. <laughs> this particular malady causes a patient to turn over too much of his or her money to the federal government, either while living or uh, when they die or both. How often do you see people suffering from this disease who don't even realize they have it? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, that's something where I see it a lot, where a lot of us are just not tax savvy. It's not our thing, right? It's funny you said that run about Uncle Sam. There's a there's a joke I read out there a while back. You know that picture of Uncle Sam pointing at you saying, I want you? Yeah, you know? Yeah. It was funny. It was like he was it wasn't about the, the military, it was actually about taxes, right? I was dying laughing because <laughs> we a lot of us feel that way, right? Like no matter what we do, there's always a tax situation. Yep. But I think there's a lot of things we could do ahead of time to situate ourselves. I think a lot of us know we got to pay taxes, right? There, there's really no way around it, but there is better times to pay taxes. There is different types of taxes. There's ordinary income, there's capital gains, and then there's tax-free money, right? Where we've already paid taxes on it. So uh, I always tell people it's very important. We always talk about, we got to be diversified. We got to be diversified. We got to look at stocks, bonds, you know, annuities, real estates, all this, all this stuff is great. But that's diversification for assets. We also have to look at tax diversification. A lot of our clients were, to be honest, the baby boomers are some of the first generations where we're seeing over millions of dollars in their IRAs for 401ks. The reason why is the prior generations, they had pensions, right? A lot of them worked for the railroad or government entities and they they just worked 20 or 30 years and then got a pension and there wasn't a whole lot more to it. Um, Now, very little of the baby boomers have pensions. So now we're seeing clients that... They, the the work of the uh, the employer said, hey, look, we're not going to give you a pension, but we'll give you a five or a six percent match on the 401k. So now you're seeing clients that are having a million dollars or two million dollars or five million dollars in IRAs and 401k money that is all taxable. Yeah. So we have those big tax bombs, we call them, that have been building and building and building. And there is uh, a lot of strategy that can go into how to properly situate ourselves. I always tell clients the ideal retirement is to have, you know, maybe 500,000, million, 2 million, depending on what you need. But the ideal retirement is to have tax choices, right? I always like to say, all we could ask for is choices. Yep. And you want some of it in Roth, for those of you that don't know, Roth IRAs, if, if we're eligible to do so and, and plan properly, that is tax-free. So again, we want to have some money in tax-free. We want to have some money in taxable, which is like a non-qualified account where it's non-IRA. It's taxed as capital gains. If done correctly, that could be a very tax-efficient investment long-term, um, as well as then we're going to have some ordinary income, right? Which would be 401k withdrawals, IRA withdrawals, all that other stuff. So it's very important when it comes time to withdraw money, we have choices, right? We don't have to just take all from this time, time bomb uh, you know, that's been building. So there's a lot of tax diversification we could do ahead of time. I always tell clients, like I said in an earlier segment, the longer you wait on this, you know, if you're 60 years old, 55 years old, 60 years old, 65 years old, and you're getting ready to retire, it is a great time ahead of time to really start planning on how we could look at this from a tax lens to maybe better situate ourselves for retirement. Because there is a good chance that taxes, like we said earlier, Ron, are probably going to continue to go up over this next decade or so. So it's very, very important that we take advantage of the time we have now to do some tax planning. Because again, there's Roth IRAs, Roth conversions, uh, non-qualified accounts, universal life insurance is a great way to get some tax-free benefits. But there's a lot of stuff we could do, but a lot of the time we need the time to do it. So make sure you make that call. If you're one of those people out there that's accumulated a lot in a 401k or an IRA, and you're looking at having a possible tax bomb down the road, it's, it's time to make that phone call to get a strategy set up to better situate yourself and insulate yourself from the possibility of tax rates going up. Call this number, 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. You may have a ticking tax time bomb on your hand and you're not even aware of it. Uh, By all means, call Logan Sadler, have a conversation about that. It's not going to cost you anything, not going to obligate you to do anything at all. In other words, you don't have to become a client. You don't have to talk to Logan again, but I think you probably will. The number to call to get that no cost and no obligation conversation is 888-823-PLAN. It's called... uh, 
Discovery Meeting. You can discover things about him. He can discover things about you. You can decide if you like to proceed from there. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. If you're suffering from one of these financial diseases that we just talked about, it's all the more important to go ahead and reach out today. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, convenient offices in Hemet and Redlands. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. And Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal. And it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to gain your financial independence today. What is your name? I am Arthur, King of the Britons. What is your quest? To get retirement ready. What is the P.E. ratio on your portfolio's top grossing products? I don't know that. Don't get blown to bits by complex jargon. Let Logan help you over the bridge to a meaningful retirement. Welcome back to more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Wherever you are today in Southern California, remember Logan's number is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. You can uh, find out more about uh, Logan Sadler. Go to uh, financialbeatradio.com. You can take advantage of all the podcasts that are available. Uh, Maybe some of the shows you might have missed in the past. You can listen to all of them if you like, if you have a lot of time. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call, and uh, you can get a conversation with Logan. We call it a discovery meeting. You can discover things about Logan, vice versa, and decide if you'd like to move on from there. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number, leave your name and your phone number, you'll get a call back, and then you can have a conversation arranged to, between the two of you, and there's no obligation, no cost whatsoever for that. Uh, let's go to the mailbag here today, Logan, because we have some great questions that have come in. Uh, the first one is from John and Menifee, and John says, and, and these are all three kind of kind of really different questions questions today that I don't think we've had before. I'm excited. (laughs) Uh, John in Menifee says, can you help me decide if it's worth remodeling our kitchen? (laughs) My wife has wanted to do it for a long time, and I know I would enjoy it too. I could could liquidate some investments and pay cash for the project. I just question whether it's worth it because I don't think it will increase the value of the house by the amount that we end up paying. So what do you think, Logan? (laughs) That's a fun one. I like this one. Um, You're putting me right in between you and the wife, right? now. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, you know, it, the kitchen is one of those big areas of a house that typically is is pretty positively affected when you put money into it. It does t- typically increase. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, if you put forty thousand dollars, which I know that could that could easily happen nowadays, into a uh, into a kitchen, depending on what's how big the kitchen is, what you, if you got to do new appliances, all the stuff that goes along with it, might be ten, might be thirty, might be forty, right? So it's something where you really want to look at that and and know that you're probably not going to get all of that money back. If you're planning on selling the house soon, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's something where, and if you had to sell investments that might be causing tax implications, you got to factor that in as well too. Because just because you got forty grand available, you might have to take sixty to get the forty, right? Depending on the taxes, whether it's IRA yeah. or there's capital gains or whatever the situation is there. I would really uh, look at that and make, and that's one thing. If I was your advisor, I'd kind of run the numbers and see how worth it it is. And then the next thing comes down to how bad do you guys want it? You know, how bad do you need it? Is it something that uh, you could afford to do? And how would it, you know, would it would it make your life a little bit better? Would you both agree to it? Would it would it make things worth it? Uh, those are some of the questions I would ask. I think the biggest thing though is what would be the implications to get the cash? And then also I would look at the financing options because you might be able to get a decent rate. I know a lot of these places now do zero percent interest for so many months, or or you know two percent or five percent or whatever the amount is. You might be able to get a pretty good deal on that. So I would kind of run the numbers, uh, bounce some numbers off your advisor if you don't have an advisor 
we can kind of get a get an understanding of what assets you have and what we're looking to do and and see how that would kind of fit into the overall plan but i would definitely go about looking at some of those finance options and again understanding the fact that you're probably not going to get all that money back you may but probably not so really look at that and see how much you really want it hey logan do you mind if i add one thing here one yeah go for it prominent thought let's do it happy wife happy life yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That's one. That's one factor I left out of there, right? Uh, I totally agree with it on there. I'm married as well, so I, I understand it. I, I don't blame you for wanting to to uh, to make the wife happy. It's always a smart idea. Yeah, I always take that into consideration for sure. Uh, yes. Lori has a question, and Lori lives in Chino Hills. Uh, how much should I put into a college fund for my new grandson? We can invest a big amount now and leave it alone, or put some in every year. I assume we're screwed if he ends up not going to college, <laughs> but I guess that's a risk worth taking. Yeah, great, great question, Lori. It, you know, it's funny. I actually had this conversation yesterday with a client. Uh, it's a younger client. They're getting ready to have a baby, so it's not not quite the grandkid, but it's a younger client. And uh, it was funny because that was kind of what we were talking about. They were wanting to do some college funding. How much should we put in? And what's the impact? You know, and all that. And then as well as do we want to do a college fund or do we want to do a traditional type of an account? Uh, because there is some pros and cons to 529s and other types of college funds that are, you know, they can be extremely beneficial if the client, or if, sorry, if the client, <laughs> if the kid goes to college, right? The granddaughter, grandson, um, they can be very, very beneficial. The only problem is when they decide not to go to college is when it's something that's kind of hard to look at because there's tax implications or penalties in some cases. So you really want to make sure it is the best fit. And what's the hardest question here, Lori, is, you know, is that kindergartner, is he going to go to college, right? Or <laughs> we, we don't know, you know, <laughs> there's so many different things out there. I could tell you from personal standpoint, what I've recommended to a lot of clients that are kind of unsure. Um, and I put myself in the same category. When I had my son, I did the same thing. I just started a non-qualified account in mine and my wife's name. And uh, I could fund as much as I want. Um, I could pull it out for whatever I want, whether that's private school during high school or elementary school or whatever you want it for. Or if they don't use it for college, they can kind of use it for maybe buying a house, maybe, uh, you know, maybe for a wedding. You kind of have a lot more flexibility with that. Sure. And uh, again, it could be intended for college. The only difference is there might be some tax implications when you withdraw the money. But again, if done properly, depending on how much you're looking to fund, it can be a very flexible investment that, again, I always say it gives you the control to kind of utilize it for whatever you want to for that future grandson or granddaughter. And I think a lot of us would rather pay maybe a little bit in taxes to have that flexibility. Um, is typically kind of the, the route I took. Again, the 529s and other things can be a great investment, but there's a little bit more limitations to those. So I would love to kind of sit down and kind of strategize with you and see what your situation is and, and see what is the best course of action for funding those. Because uh, And as well, tell you the right amount. Like I ran one for the client the other day. It was crazy because you could put away, I want to say they were only putting away like three or 400 a month and it was going to end up being like, you know, $200,000 or something by the time the kid was 18. So, I mean, it is amazing when you look at, depending on what age you start and how much you put away and where it's invested, it can be a pretty good hunk of money to utilize for college. So we can kind of uh, be able to reverse engineer that, see how much you want to put away or how much you're looking to get by this time frame, And as well as look at where is the right type of account to put that in and what's the most beneficial for you and for the grandkids. Such a good conversation to have. And Lori, thank you so much for the question. One more question today, Logan Sadler. It is from Ted in Beaumont. And Ted says, Logan, I listen to your show all the time and I really enjoy it. I have a cash value life insurance policy that I've had for many years. I've heard that life insurance rates are better now than when I got this policy back in the 90s. So is it a good idea to take my $75,000 cash value and use it to buy a new policy? Yeah, great question, Ted. Um, you know, it's funny. I don't talk a whole lot about cash value life insurance on here. We, 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 we do it from time to time, but it is a great investment for a lot of people. It's something a lot of people didn't even know they had. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you end up like in your situation where you got some pretty decent cash value. Um, it is something we utilize for our clients if it fits right. And uh, yes, policies have gotten, in my opinion, uh, a lot better over these last few years. They've just got a lot more bells and whistles to them. And some of them are more inexpensive, which... Hey, who doesn't want more bells and whistles for a little bit less money, right? That's always exactly. kind of the goal. <laughs> but you know, the whole, the only thing with life insurance, Ted, a lot of the times it comes down to health. So if if nothing's happened health wise and your age is still relatively in a good spot, it's definitely worth uh, giving us a call or, or whoever you work with and and having them run the numbers on that. Because I had a client who we were actually dealing with 
from uh, one of our one of our webinars we did. She actually was able to come in, and we were going through everything. She had a great retirement plan, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm, I have this old, I have this old life insurance policy. It's got it had about one hundred and fifty thousand uh, of cash value, so pretty similar to where you're at. And it was crazy. She said that she didn't really want it for cash value. She wanted it more for death benefit. Yeah. So we were able to put that same just just move the one hundred and fifty thousand over as a direct transfer, so no taxes are due on it. It was actually able to almost triple her current death benefit. Wow. Right, so it was like, man, okay. And I've had some clients where we've been able to do the same thing, and they actually was able to increase the cash value growth. So it's something where I definitely would recommend. It doesn't hurt to just have that conversation and look at the options. And and again, all we want is options in life. So I would definitely recommend you giving giving us a call. And I'd love to life insurance. One of the things I love to talk about, and it's very fun to kind of we're independent, so we could run all these different companies and kind of see which one would be the best one out there for your age. Because each life insurance company, in my opinion, kind of has their sweet spot. So give us a call. I'd love to kind of run through those numbers and see uh, what the impacts would be on that and see what the benefit would be to leave it or to move it and uh, give you those straight answers straight to you, Ted. The number to call, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. You know, the thought strikes me that you may be in a lot better shape financially than you thought. And all it takes is a phone call to Logan Sadler and a conversation to find out and achieve some peace of mind. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-7526. That is good for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Logan Sadler, a discovery meeting that is not going to cost you a penny, not going to obligate you to do anything at all. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number today, and you can set up a time uh, when you get a return call. You can set up a time to have a conversation with Logan Again, uh, absolutely cost-free, obligation-free. Uh, Logan, it's been fun being with you today. I know that we've gotten some great questions from our listeners, and you've covered a lot of ground today, buddy. And we've talked <laughs> about financial diseases and all kinds of stuff. So, hey, it's been fun, and I'm already looking forward to next week's show. Yeah, those of you that have tuned in and tune in quite frequently, we always appreciate the support here on the Financial Beat, and uh, hopefully we brought you guys some great information and uh, some diseases and, and golf talk and all that stuff today. So I look forward to being back here next week, and again, love the opportunity to uh, educate you guys and bring this information to you, and uh, we'll see you next week. One more time, if you haven't written down this number, please do so. 888-823-PLAN. Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, offices in Hemet and Redlands. This is the Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz. Have a great week. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.